Oh, well, here's another solar video from Zan, and this is another extreme repair video, but we'll get into that in a second. Um, I haven't made very many solar videos lately because we've been so busy making arrangements to fully go off grid that I haven't really had the time to make many videos about it. But I will make some soon, well, in a wee while, after the pagan gathering, I guess, and show you a few tricks that I've done. But anyway, um, what was it, last last weekend, last last Sunday, we headed over, was it last Sunday? Sunday before, we headed over to Taupo, and we, um, Sunday before last, and we um, picked up these solar panels which I scored on um, Trade Me, and what was really awesome was the guy threw in a fifth one for free. And... Notice that these are the real old school BP solar kind of ones. I've been wanting some of these for a while, eh? Just because I like the look of them, just because of the round panels, just for something different, you know, collect them all kind of thing, you know. I've got a lot of different types of panels and that kind of amuses me. But anyway, there's two kinds. There's these ones here, which are known as the, the BP-164s. And these are the BP-158s. And they are not 164 watts and 158 watts. Hell no. Um, it's probably more like 64 watts and 58. As you can see, they're about the size of a 100 watt panel. But there's lots of space in between where there's no solar panels. So, you know, it's not the most efficient way to stack stuff. But at that stage, they could only make them on a crystallines as round wafers. They couldn't really make them square. So, go figure. But anyway, I just want to show you these two because... Although they're very similar, we'll go to the newer one first, the 164. Now, the way it's tabbed and, and bussed and stuff with the tabbing wire is, is very much like you'd expect to buy any panel today. It's a very conventional method here, as you can see. Just, you know, negative on the front, positive on the back of the cell to the negative and so on in series. And two groups of 18 cells with bypassing diodes on each. Which is really interesting because all the bypassing is available at the junction box, but I'm not going to take that apart now. But now the early cells are a bit different. Ah, where's the bus? Well, it's actually, they've got this really awkward arrangement actually underneath the cells here. You can see there's a bus wire there and another bus wire there. Same down the bottom when they join the two together to make each series string. Bus wire there, bus wire there. So, it does make for these panels to be ever so slightly shorter. Which isn't going to do me any favours when I go and put them up on my rails that I'm just starting to work on. But anyway, so four of these panels, these four sitting here, all work, as far as I can tell, perfectly. I've tested them both on running a halogen bulb and putting charge into an actual battery. However, the fifth one was faulty. And here it is here and I've just fixed it so it's currently sitting in the Sun not the perfect angle to the Sun and it's currently as you can see chucking two and a half amps into this old marine battery here yes this is the one from the um, you know what were those videos I made a while back there you know those sort of um, I can't even remember what I called it now but you know those those videos are sort of pointless pointless resurrection of a battery experiment kind of ones this is the battery it's still alive it's still at 10.5 but at the moment you can see 13.48 and that's due of course to the influence of the charge from the solar panel so yeah I'm pretty happy with the way that's working so I've, I've under test I've got out of the out of the newer ones I've got a bit over 50 watts so and, and I find in the real world there's that you never get the, the the you know the nameplate ratings out of them you never do some people might disagree I guess maybe you might get closer to it with MPPT or something I don't have any MPPTs but you stick up more panels they're cheap but anyway, this video, before I go on and on and on and on about stuff that isn't to do with this video, is I wanted to show you the repairs I did on this. So we can basically cane this now, get rid of that. 
Right. Turn these meters off. Get them out of the sun. The sun canes these LCD displays faster than anything. You wouldn't believe it. That um, black meter, the display had gone completely black because it left it right out here in the pelting sun. But anyway, I'm going to quickly show you my repairs. So first of all, okay, well here's the junction box. So the usual way it is, you've got one string between here and here, between here and here, and that's the middle ones are common, and then you've got the other string there, and there your bypass diodes. That's a blocking diode, there's a bypass. Now it was this right hand string that was dead, well almost dead, and I proved that by using my test bulb on each of these strings, and, and current on the meter too. So, I found out that was a string that was dead. So, I marked the side with an X. That X means that this side is the dead side. So, that means effectively I had a 6 volts nominal solar panel that worked. Well, that's not much good for anything. I don't have any 6 volt circuits. So, then I thought we can do better than that. So, doing the classic thing I'd done with the broken panels, I dug in under the layer here you see until I found that big fat bus wire and then I had a point I could test so I could test between there and there or down there and there and so I subsequently determined then it was this half string here the second one in that was faulty so you know it's just a process of elimination so I just had the meter on current so I was just looking for the short circuit current because that way voltage is not important because you'll get the same current whether you've got one cell five cells or ten cells unless there's a fault right and ironically as it turns out that this inner layer which was the faulty one is actually the outer string or the outer half string and the outer layer here is actually the inner half string so again go figure I mean why they do it like that hey eh? it seems pretty awkward to me but so I could have just bypassed from down here and had uh, 27 um, you know is it 27 27 cell panel 26 cells you know, 36 minus 9 26 cells 26 cell panel and um no 27 what did i it's too hot out here for god's sakes so i could have done that but that would still be useless to charge anything that would barely charge up a battery although admittedly you could bung it on a battery without a charge controller and it would never overcharge it but still not much use so i did some more digging and some more determining now obviously you don't want to go digging between every single panel and testing each one individually that would be a rigmarole so it was time for some educated guessing well, I don't like the way they've done this bus wire arrangement so I suspected of course first maybe it was this bus wire here that was at fault or something to do with the ones up here where the junction box is behind there so I scraped off here between the two panels so measuring between these two now I could check and prove this bus wire or I could measure between here and up here and do it as well and I did both of those and it proved that that connection down there was fine so then I thought well I'll try the top end so I exposed this one here now I was a bit naughty there I dug in a bit far with a knife and I actually severed the tabbing wire which was you know a bit of a prick but it would have been easy to solder back together should I'd needed to but I didn't and I'll explain so you can't really see much on this side but that's the point there so then I measured between this point and our output and found well we had pretty much full output so as it turned out Whatever was behind this panel was what was faulty. One of these connections to one of these awkwardly wide buses is faulty. 
in fact it was intermittent because sometimes occasionally I'd test it and it worked so that's no good don't want it up on the roof and then it goes open circuit so just like my broken panels I decided I could just route around this one bypass it and losing half a volt is really going to change very little when it comes to charging batteries so that's what I did I mean some people I know would be very pedantic and they might have gone well I can get every single one going which would have meant having to pull off this junction box and dig around under there where there's all those crazy bus wires and stuff um, and that's not for me eh for me I, I like to balance up the um, advantage of the repair I'm going to make versus the jeopardy I'm putting the thing that I'm repairing to you know and I like to minimize that strike a good balance between the final result and the jeopardy I have to bear and therefore the stress so my compromise was quite simple I'll just bypass that panel so I actually so here's the wire here I just disconnected it from that terminal and made some new connections using these brown and blue wires each side of the pat of the cell to there so now I've got a 35 cell solar panel and that'll work fine so not bad really you know as I say it was nice to do this kind of repair but not have to do the other annoying stuff the whole you know broken glass shit and all the spraying it and all that stuff so you know I mean it would have been better if it had worked perfectly straight away but for you know five panels for the price of four and I've only lost one cell and a little bit of time mucking around that's pretty good going really I've just got a seal these up now I'll probably use a bit of hot melt glue initially because I have no patience just to give those wires a good strong physical anchoring there but then I'll probably coat the whole lot in um, silicone because that would be a better waterproof connection and I'll just go over these ones I've dug out with silicone too and that'll be fine not a problem I mean you know these things are put together by using a vacuum suction thing to suck all the layers together but they are not a vacuum they are pretty much airtight and definitely watertight but they are not a vacuum tube they're not a valve you know it's not like I'm going oh look this valve's faulty I'll just crack the glass off and fix the heater and then um, tape it back together and it'll be a good valve no it's not like that so there we have it so that's what I've been up to now I might not put these up for a while yet we'll see because at the moment at the moment what we've got up here everything at the moment at this time of the year you know um, you know two or three weeks before Lunasa um, is giving us all the power we actually need there's no real issues but of course as the season starts to wane towards autumn and then of course into winter then putting up these extra panels is really gonna make the difference so there we have it see you later